Hello everyone, welcome back to the Plunder Den. Uh, in this week's episode, we are going to do that uh, painting tutorial for that uh, Sloop of War. So just a reminder, uh, last uh, week we talked about all the ships, and uh, this is the uh, ship that uh, I decided to paint and build. So in this uh, video, we're just going to cover the painting of the base, uh, similar to the uh, the one we did for the bark. Uh, and then I'll do the sails and cannons and all that other stuff in, in a separate video. Uh, so just a reminder, uh, this is the, uh, for the uh, sloop of war, we don't actually use a sloop, we use a brigantine and we alter it. And really the biggest change is this uh, big sail is gone and we add another set of these sails here. Uh, so that's... Uh, for the sail setting, so it's a little different that way. It's in a bigger ship, stronger ship, so it's a little different than the uh, regular sloop. So here, let's take a look at the uh, finished uh, product here. So this is what we're going to be painting today. And I'll show you all the different steps it took, took me to get here. Let's take a look around uh, on the deck. So in this uh, painting, it's a little different than some of the other uh, ships I've done where I use my standard uh, priming uh, technique. Uh, and this is more of a darker ship, so it's it stayed more in the black family and uh, it's a little bit darker. It's a pirate ship, so I wanted to make it a, a little bit darker. All right, so if you uh, like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you uh, hit that like button uh, and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den and uh, get first-hand information of when I start these projects. All right, so let's get down to the table and let's get painting. Okay, so uh, I've spared you the uh, preparation of this uh, uh, sloop of war here. I've already gone ahead and glued the uh, gun ports and cannons in using the same technique I've shown in uh, other videos uh, of using those uh, dollar store foam board just because I like to have the gun ports facing uh, outwards some people just glue them straight up and it's really a uh, personal preference so I like them this way and this is uh, how I've done it but I've if you're wanting to know how I done this uh, check out the uh, bark tutorial um, I do uh, a little bit there and show you how to glue them on or you can go to the Galleon one. <laughs> There's a lot of guns, uh, ports that I had to glue on that one. Uh, yeah, and I just showed you, I was pointing at the gun ports, I had to cut them out. So when the resin model comes, uh, there's still a little bit of resin left in the uh, those gun port doors you have to cut out. I use those uh, foam blocks to sit it on so I can glue the opposite side. All right, so I was over at uh, Michael's looking for some inspiration. I wanted to add a figurehead to this ship. Uh, and uh, I came across these deep sea creatures. Uh, the Michaels here in town are really good. It's got all sorts of new stuff in there all the time. And I came up with this, I don't know, it's kind of like a, looks like a barracuda fish or something. I don't know. It looks kind of creepy. So I cut the uh, tail off and uh, I cut the trim. It had a little fin on the top. And why I did that is just so it fits the line of the ship properly. I do end up gluing that fin the reverse way on the bottom just to fill in the spot. Uh, purely just so it stays in the same line uh, of the ship. I want to make it look like it was you know part of the ship or carved in the ship. You can see I'm just pointing at where I cut it off. I just used a pair of fabric scissors and trimmed her up. It's all going to be painted black anyways and, and, and nobody's going to really notice the difference. So I kind of use a combination of super glue and uh, the hot glue gun to adhere this. I, I know I just show you the Gorilla Glue, but uh, really it's it's a hard place to hold something to let it set. So I use the hot glue gun to put it in place and I use some super glue as well. And the hot glue allows you to fill in some gaps and stuff that you're going to paint over anyways. So it just kind of makes it look like one solid piece. So I was pretty happy with this. Um... I just wanted to be a little bit more menacing on this pirate uh, sloop of war, so I wanted to add a little more menacing figurehead on it. All right, so this is uh, the standard procedure <laughs> for me: is uh, start with the multi-surface black craft paint uh, and uh, just cover the entire uh, ship. This will also bind everything together. 
But remember what I mentioned before, uh, be careful about the gun ports. Now you noticed I haven't put the uh, wooden, uh, I made a bit of an error and forgot to put the wooden uh, pieces to put the rigging on, but I ended up stop painting in this video here. I don't show you guys that, but I uh, ended up gluing them on right there before I filled it in with craft paint because you certainly don't want to do that. All right, so you can see they're on there now. So everything's uh, painted, just checking it over, making sure everything is uh, covered. So I, I really want to keep it a little bit darker this time. Um, so we are going to go to the real brown next, but we're only going to be very strategic of where we place it. Uh, I don't want to lose a lot of the black that I put down. So we're just going to kind of hit some areas on the deck. Uh, and I decided to make a, a lighter stripe uh, through the center of the ship. So I'm going to add the uh, real brown to that. We're going to go through several browns that we're going to add. Lots, uh, lots of multiple layers, uh, especially on the top of the deck. My ultimate goal is to get it into a, more of a, a goldy uh, brown, similar to the uh, French frigate I painted before. Um, but... Uh, so yeah, I'm just doing a little circular motions. I'm just gonna make pockets where it's lighter, uh, where I add this uh, real brown. I do the inside of the ship, so I do the sidewalls too. I add some real brown, so I wanted to, because uh, I am gonna be coloring the inside of the ship, um, but the outside's gonna be much darker. I wanna add some grays and make some aged look wood on it. and. Uh, and give it some, a different color scheme than some of my previous ships. So the priming's a little different on this one. That's why I'm uh, just showing you a little bit further on. Just uh, doing the sides, doing the centers, uh, and uh, filling that all those gaps in. So I don't uh, show you, but I did a little bit on the uh, on the uh, tail end of the ship too as well. All right, so we're going to uh, move on here. And i uh, just showing you that that's what else I'm going to paint. All right, so I, I did do the middle piece, and here I'm showing you right now. So I did paint that because I want to make that stripe lighter. Same with the front of the boat uh, and the figurehead. I kind of gave it a bit of a brown. So you can see that I've got a bit of a worn down area. And I contemplated just kind of leaving it something like this. Uh, but I just can't help it. I always end up adding colors and stuff like that. I just really uh, like that. So I, I just showing you, I brought up some real brown on top of the uh, front of the boat, that little mast there, um, because I just keep adding a little bit of colors to it. Uh, I'm going to make that real dirty looking. Uh, we're going to add washes and other stuff to it, but uh, to dirty up that dowel. All right, so now we're going to go to uh, a color I've never actually used before. Uh, it's uh, Burnt Umber. You know, I've used it on my canvas before, but I've never actually used it on a ship before. So I want to get a different, uh, a little bit of different feel to it. So Burnt Umber is kind of between real brown and bark brown. So it's not quite as light as bark brown, um, but it's a little bit lighter than the real brown. I end up using a lot of Burnt Umber and mixing it with uh, different other colors, uh, yellow ochre and other stuff to uh, do this deck. And you'll see when we get further in the video. But I'm going to hit those same spots, uh, maybe a little bit smaller um, area, but I'm going to hit the same spots that I put the real brown on, and I'm going to add this burnt umber to it. It's going to lighten it up even further. And hit that stripe all the way down. Same thing, front of the ship and the figurehead. All right, just showing you what, I, what I'm doing next. So I did move to... Uh, this army painter dry brush just because it, it found it a little challenging to get in between the gun ports and stuff I, I wasn't like overly careful if you spill some over no big deal you're going to paint over it anyways that just adds another little base color to it it's not really crazy similar to my buildings uh, that i paint i'm not overly careful at this stage i'm just kind of laying colors in and i'm not uh too concerned about staying in the lines um, a lot of this stuff is going to be painted over with other colors it's mostly more important to 
work it in where I want the wood texture to be. Uh, and so that's that's more important than staying in the lines in there is to, to fill that. So I really wanted to hit all that area with that burnt umber. And the uh, front figure head, gonna add some more to the mass, some of the wood grains that I wanna paint. Uh, the doors. Can't forget the details on the inside. They had the same colors. So these are all the areas I intend to be a little bit lighter. And that's why I'm adding these extra uh, browns to it. Alright, so you should have something looking like kind of like this. Just kind of the areas that you've hit. Just showing you everywhere I've uh, gone, uh, just so you can uh, keep track of. I know I'm, I didn't show you the whole me painting it, I just kind of explained it. So now we're going to go to that bark brown that I always use. And again, we're going to hit uh, all these uh, same areas again. And this is similar to uh, the bark uh, when I've added the green in the bark build. I'm just kind of using that uh, smaller dry uh, brush, my army painter, to kind of get into these gun port areas, um, and, and just hit these. Uh, you need just need a smaller dry brush to get in there. Again, if you get some slopped on uh, those those uh, boards there, it's not really a big deal. You're gonna paint. I'm gonna paint over those. So uh, it's just. Uh, Again, you're more concentrated on trying to uh, dry brush the wood grains on there. Try to go against the grains. Uh, I know I've been kind of just doing circular motions because I'm uh, just putting highlights in there. Just showing you that I'm going to hit all those same areas again. All right, so now let's take a look with after uh, we've added the bark brown. You can see it's quite a bit lighter. And we're slowly, slowly working our, with multiple layers, working our colors in here. So now we're going to go to the camel. And I'm really only going to hit uh, a few particular areas with this. Actually, mostly more just the top of the deck than anywhere else. And we're not going to leave it this color um, like some of the other ship builds. Uh, I just want to lighten it up further. So it's pretty dark right now. And that's good for the outside of the ship, but I want to have it a little bit lighter on the inside. So I'm just showing you I'm planning on doing the tops. So this is what you should look like when you're done. I did actually, just to make a note, I switched to the larger uh, dry brush, eventually what I did. Now the smaller one's a little harder to spread it out on a larger surface. So I ended up adding it uh, with the larger one. Uh, liar, uh, the step up. So then I just showed you that I did the figurehead too. I wanted to lighten up the figurehead. So now we're moving to a yellow ochre uh, by Folk Art, another craft paint. And I'm going to lay that over top of, of the uh, camel. So it's going to be really, really yellow right now. And this is only to be an undertone. It's not the be-all, end-all color. Uh, again, you're just building layers up on this deck. Just really gives it a, a bright golden color when we're done. Uh, but you uh, you got to lay these steps in. Uh, it really makes a difference uh, in the overall appearance. Again, I started with a small uh, dry brush, but I ended up moving to the larger dry brush. So it's just easier to paint with it. Okay, so then I mixed the burnt umber and the yellow ochre together. So I made a little spot like I always do on my... My little plate here, mix it together, uh, and then I just covered the whole thing. So I've already pre-painted most of it, but I left a little bit just to show you guys. Uh, and just try to keep it to the center. Try to leave all those good shadows that we've created already with all the different colors on the edges. Really gives that worn, um, weathered look, and that's what we're going for here. So what... Uh, we're going to do at the end of this is we're going to add some more yellow. So when this dries, it actually dries a little bit darker. Uh, and we lose a little bit of our golden color. So we'll come back uh, with some more yellow ochre to, to uh, address that. Fortunately, you can only see my hand, but all I'm doing is uh, circular motions on there. 
uh, just really giving that a uh, golden feel. All right, so let's move on here. Okay, so same thing again, mix it together. And what I decided at this point is I moved that same color and went around the area in the middle and the figurehead. And the two sides on the opposite sides of the doors, I hit all the doors and the back of the ship. So these were some personal choices I made. Uh, you could do it any which way you want. Um, you could do the whole inside if you wanted to and, you know, leave the outside dark or, or whatever you want to do. Uh, I'm just showing you this is uh, what I decided to end up doing. So I really want that orangey, goldy color in the middle of the ship too. So it kind of gives it a feel of the British Navy, kind of, but it's not really because it's a pirate vessel, but maybe they captured it from the British. They're really famous for having a yellowed center ship and black uh, body, but... All right, so we're going to... I decided to do this uh, top area as well. Uh, so when I painted the ship, I didn't really have a plan. I kind of knew what I wanted to. I wanted to stay a little bit darker. Um, but uh, I just kind of just paint. And uh, if I think it's not right, I'll add something in or I paint something a different color. Uh, and you'll see that when we go through this painting tutorial, there's a couple of times I've changed my mind. Okay, so this is a fur brown, fur brown sorry, from uh, Army Painter. And I've used this in my Tartana build and some other ships. It's a really, really light brown. I use it on the bases of all my, uh, uh, my miniatures as well. And we're going to hit the inside of this boat. So I've decided to keep the inside kind of a, a lighter brown color uh, and just to offset uh, the other colors that I've already put on there so I had contemplated doing the gold but I, I really wanted to have some contrast in there so I, I kept it different and I did the uh, the doors uh, on the top the bottom just added that fur brown in there just added some color I really like that uh, different uh, two tones there Alright, so we should be looking right about like this. I also added that fur brown too, you can see, to the gun ports and other areas. So I went back to the yellow ochre, as I mentioned before, and I hit the tops of those uh, decks again. So when that uh, combination of burnt umber and yellow ochre dried, as I mentioned, it got a little bit darker. So I decided to go back with some yellow ochre on, and this gave me really the color I was looking for. That golden, golden brown. Uh, sorry, it's more of a gold color, uh, but it looks like wood, and I really, really, really like this. I've done this on a few different ships, and, and I really like this color for a deck. I'm telling you, I hit the uh, stripes as well, uh, and the figurehead in the front. So this is a Necromancer cloak. It's a gray, and I've used this before in the... Uh, uh, the build my building mode to tutor style building or uh, on the windmill I just kind of use those multiple grays for aged wood uh, I kind of decided to actually I ended up doing all the framing out in this color um, but then I decided I made it too light but I kept the bottom gray so we're gonna just show you uh, some of the areas that I'm painting uh, I'm using uh, that flathead brush as I mentioned it before in the bark build, I like to use that brush because it's uh, easier to paint with uh, ships anyways. So hopefully I can move this into the, <laughs> come out of the camera again. I uh, sometimes forget where I am. <laughs> there we go. Now you can see what I'm doing. So originally I was just going to do those and then I changed my mind and I decided to do the whole base. Um... I ended up just painting the whole thing, all the framing, bottoms, everything. I just wanted to add a element of distressed wood, a little older wood in those areas. So you can see as I'm painting, I just changed my mind. <laughs> I decided to do the whole thing. And I actually ended up moving on to uh, a dry brush, a bigger brush, uh, just to uh, paint it faster. 
anyways, just showing you what I'm painting. I paint all the rest of it that color. All right, so this is kind of what it looks like now. A little bit of gray everywhere, a little bit of yellow. Just kind of giving it a lay in the foundations for some aged wood on the bottom. So now I'm going to use a color that I've never used before. It's a Crusted Soar. Lovely name. <laughs> this is from uh, Army Painter. And really it's a it's a burgundy color. That's what it is. And I decided I wanted to do a, a burgundy stripe. I actually end up... Uh, I, I want to do a red stripe, really. Uh, but I really wanted to have some deep colors to it. So I wanted to start with the darkest red first, which is this uh, uh, crusted sore. It's a burgundy color. So I ended up hitting uh, the tops of the, that figurehead. I wanted to make the head kind of red on that uh, fish there. Uh, and then uh, all around the trimming. So here we go. This is finished. You can see I hit some of the uh, woodwork on for the rigging. And I'm just making these decisions as I go along. Do I like that better? It looks better. As you can see, I painted quite a bit of the fish's head. So then I moved on to, uh, it's a contrast paint. And it's called uh, Blood Angels Red uh, from Citadel. And it kind of, I want, like this for getting into these little crevices because it, it actually is really runny because it's a, it's a contrast paint. And I was able to fit it into uh, certain areas, especially around the trimming uh, of the uh, of the boat. I'm just showing you. I hit some of the the fins, and the tops. Just added uh, different variations of red. Yeah, I just wanted to have. Uh, I'm gonna multi-layer the red with different uh, different colors and different shades. So this one's pretty deep, as you can see. It's it's like blood, <laughs> uh, but I like it. It's uh, nice and dark, and then I can add more lighter reds to the top of it. So you can see I'm alternating back. This is a dark uh, stone uh, to another gray. I go from red to gray to red to gray. I go back and forth as one's drying. I'm working on another one. And then I kind of just keep going back and forth until I get these completed. So I'm going to hit that with the dry brush. Um, so originally, uh, I just dry brush the bottom, and then I go to the smaller square brush for the details up top. This actually gray has a lot of brown in it. I mean, you can see it while I'm adding it to the gray. This uh, dark stone actually has quite a bit of uh, brown in it. So I'm just showing I did all these areas. I do the top grid there. I do the bottom, just right from the bottom of the figureheads. Just kind of all the different areas that I've added this color to. All right, so we're going back to red now. And we're going to another Citadel paint. This is uh, Memphis uh, Red. And it, uh, it's a pretty, uh, pretty bright red. Uh, so again, we're going to hit some of those areas, and I just want to highlight some of those areas. Now, it looks really extremely red right now, but it dries darker. Uh, a lot of paints, when you put them on, they, they're brighter when you put them on, and they dry darker. So you got to take that in consideration. So I, I knew that I was eventually having to, going to have to go to an even lighter uh, red, um, like the pure reds in, in Army Painter. I, I, I like that color. But I wanted to add a richness to the red, so I added a lot of different shades. So I went to all the areas I added the red and added this uh, color to it. Okay, now we're going to uh, Skeleton Bone by Army Painter. And I'm going to highlight the, uh, the the little designs that are in the, uh, you know, in the trim where we put the red. There's a little... Uh, it's kind of like leaves or branches or uh, in there, and we're gonna highlight that with this uh, skeleton bone color. Uh, 
So let's see if I can move it down on the screen again. I'm a little off the screen. Here we go. So I'm using that same flat square brush. And uh, just because I tap the top of it, as you can see, uh, I, I don't... Uh, it's a lot easier to paint the raised surface than it is to try to use a sharp, uh, you know, a finer uh, brush. So this is a uniform gray. And it's a lighter gray. So we're just going to add another lighter tone to all the grays that we have already put it on. So I'm going to use that same dry brush again. And we're going to put this uh, uniform gray on it. Just some circular motions. And just trying to add, uh, just just give it an aged wood look. That's essentially what I've been trying to do the whole time here. Just adding different layers of it. Now, after this stage, this is when I realized that I was going a little too light. So I ended up putting black back into the, uh, I frame out everything in black. Uh, and that really gives me the desired look I was looking for. But uh, I was able to keep the aged gray wood that I worked on, uh, but make it darker by adding the black trim to it. So I'm just showing you all the different areas that I had. I even added a little bit on the bottom of the figurehead just to make it look dirty. And aged wood there, like the paint's falling off. So that's what uh, I meant. I went to the matte black, Army Painter. Uh, really good black paint, really matte finish. Um, and then so... I ended up doing all the trim here. I just realized that it was just just a too, little bit too light. And there wasn't a good definition here. So I knew that I had to add black lines back into it. Which I do. I go around the whole ship, hit all the lines, the tops, everything in uh, with, uh, with the black. So now we're going to do uh, the windows. Now I've showed this in previous videos, but I'm going to spend some time on it in this video as well. So we got the moon dust, is a light yellow. We got the uh, demonic yellow, is the more darker yellow. And then we got lava orange. So those are the three, all army painter paints. So we got the window right there. I really haven't done anything with it since we put some brown on it. Uh, and I start with that moon dust right on the very bottom. So, you know, you can do this in several different ways. Some people like to go the opposite way. Uh, where you have the lightest color to the top and down. I guess it depends on wherever your lantern is in the particular room. I'm just going to think it's the, ship, the captain's ship's quarter and he's got some on, his, on a desk or something. He's got a lantern, so it would be the lightest from the bottom and uh, darker on the top. Now, if you had the lantern hanging from the roof, it might be a little different. So, But anyways, it's personal choice. You, you can pick whatever which way you want to do it. But essentially, I lay in the three colors. And then I start mixing them together. So really that lava orange and that uh, darker yellow there uh, really makes that, that orange glow that you would find in a window. And you can put as much yellow and orange as whatever. I just kind of rework it several times. Um, and I really, I do all the windows all at once. So I'm only, only going to show you the one here in the video. Um, but I ended up... Uh, I do the same technique. I just go around the whole back of the ship and do all of them. I like adding this light to the windows. I just think it adds a little, little, little more to it. I've seen ones that just use the uh, the orange glow or just a yellow glow, and again, it's it's personal choice. I would really like to one day try painting the glow uh, so it looks like it's coming out of the ship. Now that's a very difficult technique <laughs> and uh, I've never tried it I've seen people do it and it looks fantastic uh, especially on on uh, miniatures and, and uh, such but I think a lot of uh, the people that do it that way they use uh, dry brushing uh, sorry uh, airbrushing techniques but uh, I'm going to try maybe with brushes one time to do it that way alright so this is kind of your finished look uh, got all our windows done just showing you uh, what it ends up looking like. 
So deep blue, this is just a quick little decoration I decided to add it on here. Uh, I wanted to paint the uh, eyeball on the, uh, the fish a different color. Uh, and just really something to stand out. Uh, I didn't want to do yellow because I already have yellow in the body and the teeth. And uh, originally I was just going to do like a black fish with a red eye, but I changed my mind. I wanted to add some more color to it. I just can't, like I said, I can't help it. i got to add color. So I just hit these eyes with this dark blue, and then I intend on putting a, a really bright, vibrant blue over top of that after it dries. So now I'm going to go to a dark tone wash. And I'm going to hit a few different areas with this. Um, this whole mast I am going to cover with this uh, uh, dark tone. I probably, uh, I did glue this on already, the mast. Uh, well, the front of it. I don't, I'm, uh, it, uh, I didn't, I didn't glue the very tip of it on. Mainly because I still haven't put the uh, sails on it yet. <laughs> So I, I made that error. Uh, the only way they could slide it on is uh, if I left the top on. So I, that's going to be in the next video. I'm not doing it in, in this video. I'm just doing the base of the ship. So then I decided that I wanted to add some uh, deeper colors to where I put that uh, uh, skeleton bone on that trim. So I, I covered it with a, a dark wash. Uh, and then I'm going to go back and highlight it again with different reds and, and uh, more of that... Um, skeleton bone just about to show you the dark tone again <laughs> black bat black <laughs> I think I'm confused on which way we're going here all right so uh, same square brush I paint most of the ship with all right so we're gonna just uh, we're gonna hit those windows so I'm gonna bring it down on the screen here in a minute <laughs> I, I realized before I did it, I wasn't in the screen. So it's a little hard to show you uh, in this uh, shot, uh, but really essentially what I'm doing is that flat brush and I'm just dragging it across. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is just hit uh, the raised areas on the window, essentially. I want to paint them black. So you can see right there, I know I had it tipped away. It looks like I wasn't painting anything, but I actually am. Uh, and uh, that, that way you hit all the windows. So I'm just showing you I did them all that same way. Uh, and uh, it leaves a nice uh, look to it. All right, so I'm just showing you I went to that. Uh, it's a really, really bright uh, blue that I added on there. Um, just to give it a, a you know a brighter color on the eyeball. So I'm going to go back to the skeleton bone. And I'm going to go back over uh, that uh, those decorations on the back of the ship again. So remember, I put the wash on there just to make it look uh, grimy and get into all those crevices. And I'm going to take a really small brush, and I'm just going to hit the edges of, uh, of this uh, decorations. And that way, it'll really bring it out, uh, but it, you know, it gives it a good weathered look. All right. And I added a uh, little... Uh, skeleton bones to the tips of all the scales on that fish just to make it look like a multicolored showing you I framed out the windows so I went skeleton bone all over the place and I hit the tips of the, of the teeth too so I got uh, kind of a two-tone teeth color <clears throat> just add some more uh, uh, brighten those details up so now we're going to move it to uh, gunmetal. I've done this in other ship uh, builds. Going to hit the hinges on the uh, the rudder on the boat. Uh, usually uh, I had to hit the cannons, of course. Uh, and um, the uh, where the swivel guns sit on the top of the of the boat. It's kind of a well a little holder for it. I, I'm assuming that it would be a little a little more strength and maybe uh, reinforced with some metal. So I usually uh, I paint those metal as well. So I'm just kind of showing you where I'm going to be painting. What's that? Uh, what's that metal? So now I'm going to go to a little bit of army green. 
And what I want to do is I want to add more age to the bottom of the boat. So I got my grays in there. And I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, but I want to add some, uh, some little plant life or algae or stuff that's growing out of the bottom of the boat. So we're going to add a, a little bit of green to the bottom. So I'm just going to kind of show you that. We're going to hit a few different areas. Now, I don't know if you noticed that on that, uh, I forgot to mention when I was using that dark uh, tone, that little port that's on the front of the boat, I dragged some of that down, similar to my uh, Tudor style building, just to make it look like there's been constant water spilling out of there and it gives it an aged look. Just showing you, I plan on doing the whole bottom with a little bit of that green. So then we're going to add a military green wash. Uh... This is another one I like to use to add algae on bricks and and bottom of ships. and It's kind of like a darker green. Again, trying to stay away from the lighter ones uh, because they don't look as... Uh, they look more like jungle. So anyways, I put it on there. Um, whole thing, bottom of the ship again. I do drag some of that out of those uh, ports again. Here, i just show you in the... In, in the just to keep it uh, looking like it's the water's leaking out of there and it's been leaking out of there for a long time and kind of dragging all sorts of dirt and grime out of there. Uh, I like to add these details. It just gives it a more of a realistic look to it. Kind of stuff where you would expect to see aging and dirt and grime. I do a little bit underneath the gun uh, ports as well. Uh, I just hit a few different areas uh, where I'd think that... Uh, there would be grime growing. Just showing you did a few areas there. So this is a strong tome. And uh, similar to other ones, uh, I like to cover all the metallics. So while I was working on all that lovely green grime on the bottom, I was letting my metallics dry uh, so I can go back and use this strong tone wash over top. I want to give it a dirty metal look. I don't want it to be... Um, too pristine and shiny. Obviously, this is an age ship. It wouldn't be uh, too shiny. So I go back over with a strong tone. And this combination of the Army Painter colors of the metallics and the uh, uh, and the washes uh, work really well. Um, and it gives it a really good aged wood. I'm sorry, aged metal look. Uh, I am going to cover it uh, with, uh, again, with my uh, paint effects with some dry rust at the end. That'll probably be the last step. So I'm just showing you I'm hitting the hinges, I'll hit the cannons, and uh, the top of the boat, and all those um, areas there on the, where the swivel gun's in. Okay, pure red. So now I'm really going to add some brightness to all those reds I've added on there. So you can see this is really also added to the end of the mast. Now I did show in this video, I painted the tip of that mast black. And kind of faded it down. Uh, I've actually did that same technique uh, on the, uh, the galleon build. So if you want to know how to uh, phase out uh, the colors like that on your uh, mass, I plan on doing the entire ship that way on this boat. Um, uh, check out that uh, galleon, uh, the second video where I do the sails and stuff. Uh, you'll see that uh, I do that fade out technique. But save time, I spared you that. So this is really the last step. Uh, adding a little dry rust. So I just hit the, this area. And then I'll show you, I, I go back a few times. I add some on, and then I go back and add it again. Uh, when I do paint the cannons uh, for this boat, I'm probably going to add a little bit of rust to it as well. <clears throat> I don't know, it just adds a little bit more to it. With this metal grid, uh, it's getting wet all the time. It's going to get rusty. Um, I hit the uh, also the hinges. All right, so that's pretty much it. Um, the base of the Sloop of War is painted. Uh, and uh, we're ready to move on to our next video where we uh, do the top, the sails, the cannons, and uh, the flag, and everything else for our boat and finish it up. I think I'm going to go with black sails this time. Uh, make a really, really uh, notorious looking boat. So this is the uh, final product, just showing you the uh, final uh, view of the figurehead and all the weather we've added on there. Threw a couple pirates in there, just to uh, add to the boat. Um, I also added a little bit of bright yellow on those uh, areas where you uh, move the ship, just to kind of uh, 
those little stems there. All right, so just giving you an overall view of uh, the top of the deck, and everything came out really, uh, really, really happy with the way this shit turned out. All right, if you like what we're doing here in the Plunder Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Plunder Den. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. See you in the next one.